All right, guys, get a lot of emails on this. You see it on forum posts all over the web. What type of video card do I need? We got a couple of different types here. We've got a work, uh, we've got a high-end gaming card. We've got a workstation card. We've got the multi-view cards. Don't want to spend too much or too little. Get the right card. Get the right tool for the job. We're going to go ahead and explain that to you here for right now. Start out on the side over here with the uh, multi-view cards. What you're basically doing with these two right here, we've got one from NVIDIA, one from ATI. Two basically the same thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and explain. These are just if you need to use multiple monitors and you need to get a pretty good resolution. People like doing things like stock trading, watching the markets, things like that. You just need two monitors. You don't need huge quality, high intense graphics or anything like that, but you do need to have second screens. Let's take a look here over at the NVIDIA uh, NVS Quadro 290 graphics card. Basic slimline card. It does come with the standard bracket, but the nice thing is this does come very easily off. You can put on the uh, low profile bracket so you fit into a smaller computer. Other nice thing with this one here, you do have the uh, PCI Express X1. Now this will fit into any PCI Express slot. It's the nice thing about the PCIe, you don't have to match the uh, same slot size as long as it's uh, the same size or larger, you can actually fit it right in there. So that's you, something that you do find a lot of the uh, smaller computers as well as uh, some of the other ones. This one here, this looks like a DVI port, it's not. This is known as a DMS59 port. What that does, you say, you know, hey, my monitor doesn't uh, have that port on there, what do I hook that up to? Well. Here's the answer, this is supplied in the box. This is a DMS-59 to dual DVI port. That comes with the card, gives you dual monitor outputs. It's a nice high resolution, great for those uh, using those dual screens. Set that one aside here. We'll go over to the ATI. Same idea, low profile card. This is the PCI Express X16 slot. Now this one, the reason I'm showing you two of the multi-view cards is to just to illustrate two different types of connectors that they do have. This is called a DisplayPort connector. Again, monitor doesn't really have anything. The reason they use these, if they don't have enough space to put two full-size DVIs, which you often don't on a low-profile card, these take up a lot less space. And this card comes with two of these. This is DisplayPort to DVI. So that gives you the hookup there. This card, nice feature with the ATI. Um, by the way, this is the Fire MV2260. This comes with the low-profile bracket, which NVIDIA doesn't supply with you. Easy right there, two Phillips screws, other bracket comes off, this one fits right on there and the screws go right back in. Now, here's the question that we always get all the time. Again, as I said, it's, we get it in email all the time, it's all over any forum you go to online that deals with this type of stuff. What's the difference between your gaming card and your workstation card? Get into some uh, main details with that and then we'll show you the two cards we have set out here. Basically, your gaming cards they're designed to run games at a very high frame rate to give you the best, uh, smoothest playback that you can possibly have on a fast paced, fast action game. They go for higher clock speeds on the CPU and the memory. That generates a lot of heat. It can cause stability issues if you're running for long periods of time. Most people, if you're playing a fast action game, they're not playing 8, 10, 12 hours in a stretch constant where you've got to be running that high frame rate and everything like that. So the issues really aren't there. Your workstation graphics cards tend to have a much lower clock speed. What that does is it allows them to run cooler and a lot more stable. You gotta remember, if you're working on something, you're doing a lot of rendering, your Maya, your AutoCAD, anything like that, you're doing it as a business, you're probably working those eight, 10, maybe 12 hour days if you're real busy, real backed up. So you need something that's gonna be stable. They also tend to have a more stable driver. They're tested a lot more because they are for a business use. Other nice features, they're optimized for the uh, animation, for the digital design work. Meaning, they do have programmable uh, designs on there, they're different type of math in there. So basically, you're, you're doing a whole lot of different things. Another main difference, great gaming uses a lot of Direct3D, DirectX, heard it all the time, they're hyping up the new DirectX 10. Your workstation cards tend to be optimized more for OpenGL, which is used a lot more in that type of application than what you would normally find in a game. Also, many of them have special plugins for specific apps. Uh, plugins for Maya, plugins for AutoCAD, things like that. Now, we're not referring to plugins the same way you think of like a Photoshop plugin, a little side program that goes in there. What is a special lines of code in there that when it recognizes you're running a specific application, it kind of tends to optimize more for that app rather than for um, you know, general use. So that's something there. 
Um, we did talk about the, the different math, and if you saw in the inbox that we did a little while back, I uh, did mention this briefly, didn't have as much time to do it then as we do now. One thing that the workstation cards do, because they're designed to show you what you're working on, your digital content, they have to be very precise. They use full screen anti-aliasing, something that you don't often see in a lot of the gaming cards. You do see on some of the real high-end ones though. But pretty much any workstation card like this one here is going to have it. This is the uh, NVIDIA GeForce FX 1500. Not quite the latest and greatest, but still a great workhorse card for doing those uh, things there. Um, do have your dual DVI, just like you find on most other video cards. And it's a nice slim design, so it'll fit in your case if you got a whole lot of other stuff in there. Not like a lot of your high-end gaming cards where they take up two slots. Um, another big thing, just in general, speaking about your workstation cards, they generally support extremely high resolutions. Most of them will support two displays at up to 3840 by 1200. There's not many gaming cards that are going to support that on dual displays. Usually if you're running dual, you have to knock it down quite a bit. Whereas you can run the high resolution if you've got the real big monitors to do it on these workstation cards. Another interesting feature is called CUDA. It debuted on the NVIDIA workstation cards, but they've since brought it down into some of the high-end gaming cards. It's really more used in the workstation market. What that is, is it's a GPGPU solution. What's GPGPU? General Purpose Computing on a Graphics Processing Unit. What that means is, right now you don't see a whole lot out there using it, but more and more programs are starting to. What they will do is they will offload intensive tasks off the CPU onto the video card itself to give you a lot better performance there. Um, that just gives you better all-around performance, lowers your rendering times, lets you move on to something else and get your work done a whole lot faster. You can move on to something else, you make more money doing it that way. Go over here just to touch what I was saying about the higher clock speeds and the size difference. We've already done a review on this card. This is a Sapphire uh, HD 4870, but you'll see it's a big dual slot design, huge cooler. That's because it has to have those faster clock speeds and everything. Takes up a lot of space in your case, generates a lot of heat something that you don't want. It's not very good for the stability of your whole system. Basically, that's it. You want to get the right tool for the job. If you're just looking multiple monitors, go with one of these. They tend to be less expensive, and you do have cards out there that will support up to four monitors. If you're doing your gaming, you just want to run games, high frame rate, this is the way to go. If you need to render, this is what you want. You want to go with the workstation card. Cost more money off the bat, but you end up saving a lot of money long run because you get more work done and you're getting paid by the job. you got to get the work done as soon as possible so you can move on to something else. Guys, I'm going to head out of here. I'm about out of time for now, so I'm Linus. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, for more information on any of the four graphics cards you saw in the video here today, head right over to CompUSA.com, type any of the four SKUs into the search bar, or you can call us 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 1-800-COMP-USA.